Hello friends, and welcome to my channel if you are new, or welcome back if you're back. Either way, thank you so much for clicking on this video today. If you're new, hi, my name's Rabbit, and my pronouns are they, them. And if you're back, welcome back. I'm really happy you're here either way. Today's video is really exciting for me. I think this might be the coziest of the autumn vlogs that I have filmed so far. So in this vlog, we're gonna be doing a lot of baking. We're having a spooky brunch breakfast situation, watching some nostalgic spooky cartoons, and walking in the leaves, getting to appreciate the gorgeous colors, the smells, and the sounds of them crunching underfoot. So if you're interested in coming along on this very cozy and delightful adventure with me, then please keep on watching. So I have to start out by saying I've been watching a lot of this kind of content myself lately, which has been what's inspiring me to do it. And one of the things that it seems that every one of these autumn vlogger people has is apple cider donuts and ever since i heard about them i thought they just sounded incredibly delicious but they're not vegan usually and kind of hard to find vegan so the solution is to make them yourself of course uh, so i have these tiny mini donut pans that i'm using to try to make my first ever um, apple cider donuts and i have to say they were absolutely delicious you douse them in butter once they're baked and roll them in this cinnamon sugar and they just taste like incredible warm little treats. So autumnal. They have um, homemade apple cider in them, which I was really excited about. And just overall, one of the most exciting and delicious autumn treats. The whole reason that I wanted to make these was to have them as part of the spooky brunch that I wanted to create. So let's get on with making some more items for that. Since nowhere near me sells proper apple cider, I've been finding ways to try to make my own. So first I go to the farmer's market or regular market and get all sorts of different colors of apples, all different flavors, the tart ones, the sweet ones, everything that I can find, as well as a couple of oranges, some ginger, and some cinnamon sticks. I'm cutting out all the apple cores and chopping them roughly into little chunks. Then once that's done, putting them all in a pot of boiling water with the added spices and oranges and all the other delicious things. And as I mentioned the last time I made this recipe, one of the best things about making it is the way that it makes your entire house smell. Just delicious, warm, comforting apple smells. Once it's been cooking for quite a while, you can mash it up, return it to the pot, cook it again for about an hour, and then strain it through a cheesecloth. There's nothing nicer in my opinion. With the smell of cinnamon in the air, it just is like absolute heaven. I have this big skull pitcher that Cage and I found while Halloween decor hunting, and it's been the perfect vessel for holding all of the delicious apple liquid. <laughs> I don't know if you would technically classify this as apple cider, but it's the closest I can find. When it's time to serve it, I put it in these black cat jack-o'-lantern mugs and add an orange slice and a cinnamon stick to each one. Next on the menu, I wanted to make a sort of pigs in a blanket situation, and um, in case you didn't know, a lot of the Pillsbury tubes of dough are vegan, like the crescent rolls and the hot dog things, you just have to check the ingredients, but it's pretty fun. But it shouldn't be regular breakfast, of course, we're having a spooky breakfast. So I'm taking these little vegan hot dogs and wrapping strips of the cut up pastry over them, so we get these little mummy dogs. Is it juvenile and childish? Perhaps. Does it make me extremely happy? Yes. So I don't care. I am delighted by my little collection of mummy dogs. I was determined to make everything in this meal spooky or autumnal in some way, so I have this vegan bacon and I tried two techniques with it. The second one worked better, but basically I'm using some cookie cutters to cut out some coffin shapes and some bat shapes into the bacon uh, before baking it. However, I found that it would work better to cook the bacon and then cut out the shapes. Anyway, for all the little scraps that are set aside, I'm just pretending they're like spooky brains or organs or something so it fits in with the theme okay it's time to make the avocado toast because delicious breakfast of course avocado toast is a welcome addition i'm taking these avocados and peeling them chopping them up adding them to a bowl with salt pepper lemon juice and garlic 
and then mashing it with a fork until it is nice and squashed down. To top the avocado toast, I am using some seaweed and I am cutting like little zigzag shapes out of the top sheet of it and then measuring it over the toast so that it will be the correct length and size for the project that we are creating and then cutting out little features and have you guessed what we're making yet? Yes, Frankenstein's monster toast. I saw, I think, like moms doing this for probably like their ch kids on the internet and I was like, I love it time to make that for me we've got two little frankenstein's monster one is kind of wide and one is kind of tall so i think they're both very cute and is there anything better than like making little faces for your sandwiches and stuff i think that like as an adult we don't do stupid fun things with our food enough but i find it enjoyable and it makes me happy <laughs> So off we go. <laughs> then it was time to get the other beverages ready. So I'm getting some coffee. This one's my favorite. It's like a vanilla flavor, but it's called Spooky Vanilla and it's from Screaming Sugar and there's ghosts on it. Adding some very hot water. And once it's steeped, I pour it into these Spooky Cauldron mugs. I love them a lot. And I've been trying to give pumpkin spice things more of a chance since I never thought I liked pumpkin spice, but this specific one, from Silk, this creamer is absolutely incredible. I got it all like nice and foamed up and it just made the most perfect breakfast. So the mummy dogs were looking not too much like mummies yet, so I'm adding a little bit of mustard to give them little eyeballs. I think uh, using a toothpick instead of a knife would have made this a little bit easier, or if I had a squeezy mustard, but I do not. So I'm just giving them some little eyeballs to complete the illusion. The bacon that is somewhat shaped like a bat in a coffin is going onto the plate. And I'm putting my little apple cider donuts in this coffin shaped ceramic container. We still have our fresh apples from our apple picking and breakfast is ready. Oh, I also cut a banana in half and gave it a little ghost face with some chocolate chips. So yes, it was a delightful, amazing breakfast. We also, of course, had our stuffed animals, Little Myotis and Lappin, dressed up in their Halloween costumes, which really are just Halloween costumes for cats. We had this new DVD that I found at the thrift store for, called Brambly Hedge, and this specific one was split up into different stories for the seasons. So of course we watched the autumn story. It was very cute. It is about a family of mice, and the animation was just very sweet, and I think there's Kind of nothing better than having a lazy Saturday morning, getting to watch cartoons, have a delicious spooky breakfast, um, perhaps watch something nostalgic, or if it's not nostalgic as in you've seen it before, it just has that nostalgic feel. It was a really delightful time. Once we were finished with the autumn story, I wanted to get my Scooby-Doo on. I'm a big Scooby-Doo fan. Um, Velma's my favorite character, if you're curious. I think she's incredible. Um, and yeah, I was a big fan as a kid and it was just nice to watch it some more. We just spent our morning super lazy on the couch together, drinking our delicious cider, our coffee, having our spooky breakfast, and watching some fun cartoons. Once we'd had our fill of laying around, we figured we might as well get out into the nature and appreciate the leaves while they're still here. And I'm so happy that we managed to do that. Seeing everything just golden in the sunshine felt absolutely magical. Feeling the leaves crunching underfoot and just smelling that smell of all the rotting vegetation. I know that sounds gross, but it's my favorite. I love it so much. As usual, the pops of red and orange are such a welcome surprise for me as I'm only used to seeing green and yellow and brown, but it's really, really cool and magical. We walked around this big park together that had this massive lake next to it with this huge colony of small ducks and the most gorgeous glittering water. A couple of berries were still left on the trees and the leaves were still mostly there when we went, though every day that I've gone out since, more and more of them have been falling off the trees. It was just so magical to be able to have this special fleeting moment. Aspen and birch trees are one of my favorites because of those black spots that look like eyes. It feels so spooky and I just love it. Being able to spend days off with Cage just aimlessly wandering in the forest. There's nothing better than having no plans, no schedule, 
nowhere to really go and the ability to just see all the beautiful colors, feel all the beautiful feelings, and just have some quality time together. <laughs> Neither of us have gone to this park very much, but both of us would like to come back some more. While the sun was shining super brightly and it was absolutely gorgeous weather, there was also enough wind that you were able to see the leaves like fall off the trees in real time and it made me feel like I was in a storybook. I, I could not believe it. I feel incredibly lucky to live in a place that has seasons like this, to be able to experience them and actually like spend time appreciating them. It's really special. I brought my basket of course so I could forage a couple of things um, for my jar to remember this season by. And while we were there, we also found a little bit of a park. It was mostly just swing sets, but that's my favorite part of the park. Swing sets still give me butterflies and they feel like so much fun. Fortunately, Cage can't really swing too much because they make him kind of nauseous, but there's just something about the butterflies in your tummy that makes me feel like eight years old again. And it's just really special. We were able to wander around and just hang out, but another of the reason that we wanted to go on this little day trip was to take some photos, um, especially of Cage's insects, before he went to the market and sold a bunch of them. It was really wonderful to get to hang out together and just find really pretty spots with the most wonderful golden trees um, to use as backdrops. It felt really special. Despite it being such a beautiful day, we were able to find a lot of spaces that were pretty deserted and it was able to feel like just us and I couldn't have asked for anything better. There's something about seeing the sunlight streaming through the trees that feels so nostalgic for school time for some reason and there's this weird sadness of feeling like the summer's ending and things are starting all over again and this like sense of loneliness but also like beauty and awe and like everything's about to go to sleep and it just it's one of my favorite times of year it's so magical and being able to experience it as an adult and just drive around and spend as much time in the leaves and as much time looking at the things that I want to look at and just touching the trees and smelling the smells and feeling everything around me it just feels so special to be able to be in control of your own experiences I feel extremely lucky. Every time Cage and I go out to the forest, it feels like there's a new species of plant that we haven't seen before. And it's always very exciting to look at the local flowers and feel like there's a new one every single time. When we got back home, I got to sweep up a bunch of the leaves that have been falling. I've been collecting them for my mom because she uses leaves to cover her garden over the winter. And it just feels so pleasant and delightful to be in the sunshine and in the golden leaves and sweeping them up. When I got back inside, I spent a bit more time watching some spooky cartoons and doing some knitting projects. I originally thought that this season I was gonna make like a big autumn blanket, but instead I ended up making a big Halloween cat tree. <laughs> There's something so cozy about doing fiber arts in the autumn. I absolutely love this season so much for that. And to round out our perfectly cozy night, I wanted to take a bath. I used this bubble bar that was inspired by Scream and had like purple, amazing, mystical looking water with like the biggest bubbles ever, which like got more bubbly as you agitated them. I have this candle that smells like cotton candy and a bunch of little tea lights lit, as well as a jack-o'-lantern candle holder thing. Basically, I was living my best spooky dream. Of course, to complete the bath, I wanted a spooky beverage of this apple drink with ice and caramel. And as I was in the bath, I got to watch one of my favorite nostalgic spooky movies on my laptop, which is Practical Magic. If you haven't seen it, it's about witches who are sisters, and it's just a, it's a lot of fun. One of the cool things about this bubble bar is that the little scream face has a hole cut out in its mouth and you can use it as a bubble blower. So I had a lot of fun entertaining myself, blowing bubbles and getting to feel all the spooky purple water around as I got to feel like a sorcerer making bubbles. Ooh, it was very, very fun. The perfect end to the spooky night. And I had done laundry earlier that day. So I was able to get in my nice clean sheets with my glow in the dark skeleton pajamas. I have my bedtime companion, Lemon, joining me, which is absolutely delightful. Getting into clean sheets, clean pajamas, after a bath, 
oh my god is there anything better basically this was one of my best autumn days completely cozy completely a dream i yeah it was incredible I hope that maybe this video can inspire you to have a really nice day for yourself, whatever that looks like for you, and I hope that you are treating yourself kindly in this delightful autumnal time, or whatever time of year that it is you're watching it or for you. Anyway, I hope you're having a really great day or night, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye for now.